What up, what up, what up? Welcome in, everybody. Excited to see everybody. Calling today's call will be special because we're going to be joined by our friend, Michael Sartain. It's going to be a sick call. All right, guys, here's the goal for the call today. For you guys that don't know me, I work alongside Corey and Personal Brand Creator Pro and Personal Brand Accelerator. Together, we built up brands for influencers, celebrities, but mostly for other guys that are trying to crush it online by having a high status brand. And so today, what we want to focus on, guys, is Q&A content breakdown and q and specifically with us and Michael Sartain. Michael's going to be joining us here shortly. The goal for the call is to not only make it a fun, entertaining call, but to give you guys some value and some one-on-one -on -one attention based off where your goals are at and what it is that you're trying to do. Today, 100% on social networking, dating questions are 100% welcome. So if you guys are looking to improve that area of your life, this is going to be a valuable resource because you get myself, Corey and Michael all on a call at the same time. Michael just Do, joined. Speak of the Michael language. just joined. Sweet. Do not hesitate, guys, to drop your questions into the chat. Don't be shy. We'll bring you guys up. We're only going to roast you if your questions don't make sense and you blab for 10 minutes straight, then we're going to roast you a little bit. Otherwise, we'll roast you from love. Corey, how you doing? Thanks, bro. Yeah, good. Thanks for that. What up, yeah. Michael? You there? Yes, I think. I hope this is me. What's up, Michael? So oh, let's give some context real quick for those that don't know who Michael is. Michael is the founder of MOA. Okay, that's the Men of Action program. Michael's also the host of the celebrity podcast, Michael Sartain's podcast. For those that don't know much about the podcast, I want you guys to think of it as the perfect meet between, say, the drama of the Alabama Riverboat, okay, the swagger of a skinny Jonah Hill, okay, and the IQ. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> the swagger of a skinny Jonah Hill, right? And enough ass and titties to fill Sapphire on a Saturday night. Michael, what up? What's going on, man? Uh, so, uh, podcast, I wasn't aware of that. Riverboat drama. Yeah, and then uh, we did Access Vegas last night, and um, Adam Sosson had got into a fight with this one girl. It got really fucking ugly. It was really bad. How do we see that, Michael? Yeah, you're go, to, yeah, go, access? go to my, uh, hold on, pull it up. Just go to my YouTube. Look at the main, go to the home on my uh, YouTube page. Just go to home. You see it right there? The first, no, the, yeah, there it is. You're like probably you'll i mean i don't know man there's a bunch of times where they just they scream at each other for like 10 minutes straight at one point there it looks uh, like 20 it, people in the room here yeah, it, was, it was the most we've ever had she was just you can see her scream and she just goes at him i don't know what it's it's probably closer to the middle i had to stop them for a while but yeah it was oh uh, God. yeah what's her name on this jesus what were they fighting about they were they were screaming at each other bro it was crazy um the barbie movie they were fighting about Barbie, Barbie man. They were talking about Barbie. The from they the both Barbie loved it or what? They no, both agree like, with it. No, she was tripping because she was like, why are you guys so, like, why do you guys care so much about the Barbie movie? And we're like, I mean, I wouldn't care so much, but it was like indoctrination for children, like, to yeah. believe that everything a man does that's masculine is, is supposed to be a joke. It's yep. supposed to be, like, every every masculine thing you do is, is basically hidden insecurity for your closeted homosexuality or the fact that you're deeply insecure about your status with women. And that's the only reason you get six-pack abs or or make money or any of it is Wait, is, that your, not, is that not the reason i don't know man you're doing you tell this? me but that, uh, that's <laughs> what we were discussing maybe it was maybe it is the reason that's funny well, Michael, what we want to do with you here today on the call, we actually want to, we're going to open it up Q&A for all the guys to ask you questions, right? Okay. We've encouraged the guys to ask dating questions, networking questions, but any questions in general. And so as we start going through this first segment, guys, feel free to drop any questions into the chat and we'll either bring you up or we'll answer them directly along with Michael. Now, Michael, what we actually want to start with that's a little bit different than just doing live Q&A is we want to pull up the most recent Maxim Teatro event video that we produced with you several months ago. Okay. And we like to do these things that are like content breakdowns where we break down what went into the creation of a piece of content, but also some of the stories behind it and how it all came to be. Instead of necessarily focusing on the images, the storytelling of the video, we actually want to talk to you about what actually brings these kind of events together so okay. first let's just start can you give a breakdown for the guys that are watching this now that don't know what this is what is this event and what is the context for it so which event is, are we looking at can you are you pulling it up Mac on the screen here here we go yeah, it's on the, it's on the oh, screen okay here. yeah this is oh man there's lauren um dude do you want to tell you a story so that's lauren blake you guys know okay who it, put a one in the chat if you guys read the setup by dan blazarian mm -hmm. anybody did any of you guys read the setup by dan blazarian okay that has to change you guys all have, if you were asking me questions about throwing events, the book of the setup by Dan Bilzerian, which just came out on audio must be read. There is no, there is no excuse. 
in the book, he talks about falling for a girl named Lauren. She was a you know college student getting her degree in uh, biology or biomechanics. I forgot what it is, or no, biomedical engineering. And um, and she he, and he was like, every time I had something cool to do, she would come hang out with me. But if I didn't have something cool to do, I just want to hang out with her. She didn't want to hang out with me. If you guys remember that, that is Lauren right there. That is Lauren Blake that Dan Bilzerian uh, talks about being in love with um, and and getting his heart broken over. That's her right there. So, so she came to one of the events anyway, and I'll say a really funny story, dude. So I was like, Hey, do you want to come uh, be uh judge my bikini or do my bikini competition? And she goes, yeah, she goes, I will do it. But uh, I heard the first prize is at 25,000. And I was like, Lauren, like, I love Lauren. Lauren's awesome. But like Lauren is like, I'm not coming because your first prize isn't 25,000. Like Lauren just assumes she's going to win first prize in my bikini competition. <laughs> I'm not saying she wouldn't. Well, my point is like the level of assumption, you know what I'm saying? Like yes. realistically, most of you are not going to win first play, play, prize. You don't live in Vegas. But like, I remember her saying, yeah, I'm not going to come out because first prize was in 25,000. I was like, damn, bro. Like, can you imagine like <laughs> being like that? Anyways, um, so this is a Maxim Teatro party. The way it works is Maxim uh, licenses out uh, their 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 events. Oh, there's Lindsay, obviously, uh, Lindsay Palas. Uh, so Maxim licenses out their events. And you pay for the license and then different people throw the parties. Now, one of the issues with the Maxim party in particular is that it's very, very expensive to throw. And so most people don't make money. So if you if you did this, you're going to do this to like promote a brand to promote some kind of energy drink or promote something like that. But you're probably going to lose money on the party just because it's really hard when you have that many girls uh, in a location to make money on an issue like this when you're starting off 60K in the hole paying for the license. So that's one of the issues with these parties. So there's a few people that do oh. these, uh, but they're always trying to, uh, like you see all the sponsors on the side. So the sponsors are the ones that kind of made up the loss so that we were able to throw this party. Right. When you use the word Maxim, so Maxim's really funny because Maxim doesn't mean anything. You guys understand it? It doesn't mean anything. Like there's no, none of you have watched a single fucking, like have not looked at Maxim magazine in 15 years if any of you have. None of you have gone on Maxim's website. None of you look at Maxim on Instagram. None of you like Maxim is not a relevant brand anymore, but their parties are still for whatever reason, just like if you had a Playboy mansion party, every girl would go to it. everyone. Girls go to the Maxim party because it's a brand that's built. And this is kind of the lesson. Like the brand is what makes everything happen. When Bilzerian has a party, every girl wants to go to the party. When Maxim has a party, even though this isn't actually Maxim that threw, threw the party, every girl wants to go to the party. When Playboy has a party, everyone wants to go to the party. When FHM has a party, when Sports Illustrated has a party, when those groups have a party, no one says no to the parties. They always say yes. The girls, what you'll notice is when you throw these different events, for those of you who have taken the course or the, the free course that we have, the first four steps of MOA, step one is, is uh, fix your Instagram. Step two is build your list. Step three is to find six events to take girls to, even though you can't go to the, those events. So, so for instance, if you say live in London and you can't come to the Maxim party in, in Los Angeles, you can still invite girls to the party and give their names to Ashkan or Corey. And then they'll just give them to me. Like you understand if you have a girl who's as pretty as Lindsay Palace, you don't need to work to get her into a party like that. She's just going to get in um, we'll, and we'll put her on the list and she'll still give you the credit for her getting on the list. And then step number four is you need to then start finding six girls to go with you to events. The reason why we chose the number six is because in order to get a comp in Las Vegas, how many girls do you usually need, Ashan? You don't need six. Women? Well, so you need five. And I always just said you need one more than that. So in general, the rule was for me, if it's one guy and five girls, you can get a comp. Now, I've seen guys get comps with three dudes before, but in general... The rule was for us as promoter, or not, I wasn't a promoter, but the rule that was taught to us, even though it wasn't actually a rule, is five girls, one dude, and you get yeah, a it's, it's, a, it's a six minimum, and you can do even ratio at certain places. You're just not going to get a quality table. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, And that's the, that's the other thing. Well, we can go into so much of this, but I, I love that you're bringing that up. You can get comps at places like with shitty ratios. The problem is they know you're the dude with the shitty ratio, and when they have their big events, they're not going to invite you. I get invited to everything because I show up to parties with girls who look like this. I invite but pretty much every girl you see on here. I, I so I invited Lauren. I I got Lindsay to come because it was um it was this is the um which theater one was this? This was the um, in February I think or March. Yeah, but no, yeah. what was it called though? It's the um it was yeah. for Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras, yeah. Yeah, Carnival. So she's from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So she's a big Mardi Gras fan. That's why she uh, wanted to come to this. When other girls found out that Lindsay was coming, so this is the next lesson. When girls find out that, that if you guys ever watched that movie, Regina, uh, what's it called? Mean Girls. 
you know, there's the there's the one girl who's the leader of all the other girls, Regina George. So fucking Lindsay's the leader. If Lindsay <laughs> goes to a party, no girl who's a model isn't going to your party. Do you guys understand? When a model who's there, you go beautiful. When a girl who's like a <laughs> ten out of ten, when, and I don't mean a ten out of ten isn't hot. I mean ten out of ten is like she's the leader. When the leader girl goes to party X, all girls will go to party X. Let me say that one more time. When the girl who's the leader, when the girl who's the highest status goes to a party, she doesn't have to be the hottest, right? She could be Khloe Kardashian, who's not the hottest. But if Khloe goes to the party, all girls say this party has received pre-selection approval and we will all go to the party if possible. If we can, um, so know. Michael, but this is this is a very important point. But package it for the guys that don't have access to someone like a Lindsay, because what the core of what you're saying is there are certain people that when you invite them, they will then bring all these other people. So you don't have to go through and invite sixty people. You invite six people, and they represent the sixty. Correct. How do you, how can you cultivate that within your network when your network isn't on par or at this level here? So first thing is step number two, which is so uh, well actually step number one. Step number one, what you'll got what you guys will find is that with Ashkan or Corey or me, if we invite girls to an event, they're gonna say yes because we look on our social media like we have competency. I was thinking, I was thinking with Corey, I was like, what is the overarching thing for all of our themes? Because there's so many themes for different Instagram accounts that guys have. And I think the, the theme, like I've said, the one access to scarce resources, you know, you have guys who are yeah. like really good with travel. I think the word is competency, because I think that's that's when you look at our ancestral past, what would women in our ancestral past find most attractive? The guy who could who could kill the meat, skin the deer, the guy who could protect the tribe, the guy who could build that guy would be what, what is what do all those guys have in common competency an, an analogy for competency is money. So money is one way you could show competency. But like in, in, in essence, like you showing like Corey's photos where he's traveling or you see some of the drone shots he does or some of the, the artistic stuff that you see on his, his Instagram that shows competency with a camera and competency where he has the ability to travel. You guys don't understand. Like a lot of, a lot of dudes will see those photos and be like, any girl can go to the Valley of fire. It's fucking free. But do they, do they No, they don't go. Cause it would, they requires a fucking leader and they don't have a leader to take them to fucking Valley of fire. So they don't go. OK, uh, one of the craziest things I learned and Corey, I, I can, I'm sure you can attest to this. Girls with stunning women with huge fake tits and green eyes will come to Vegas and could effortlessly walk into any club they wanted any night they want. And they still hit you up. And they're like, bro, they're like, hey, Crazy. we want to go see chain smokers tonight. We want to go see chain smokers tonight. And you're like, you want to go see chain smokers tonight? What the fuck do you need me? That's the question you might ask yourself. And the reason why they're asking you is because they need a leader. Does that make sense? And Yo, so Michael, this is, this is the whole this is the whole role of girl guys in Vegas is to find a girl from Kansas that doesn't know she's hot so that she so he can take her to a table. It's such madness. So so like like consider this, right? You you have a you have the oh guys, I'm switching over to my laptop. Um you, uh, you, I, I can't tell you how many times there'd be some girl and she'd hit me up and I was like, this girl's stunning. And it was like her, with like 12 other stunning girls. And they're like, Hey, can you get me into such and such? And I'm like, I'm like, oh, like you would just walk up. I knew in my mind, they could just walk up and they could get in in two seconds. So like, why do they need me? And of course the answer is they want me to handle it. So you guys need to consider this. When we talk about throwing these events, when we talk about going on dates with like super hot women, when we talk about any of this stuff, the reason why they're coming to you is so that you can handle it. Guys who get it and guys who can handle the problems, that shows what we just said before, competency. If you can show competency through your social media, which is that step number one, that's how you end up getting attention from these girls and they're more likely to hit you up, Right. Um, pre-selection is an, also another way of showing competency. Like, so for instance, girls see my girlfriend and then they're like, okay, this guy can obviously handle a very attractive woman. So therefore I'm much more likely to trust him tonight. I'm going to slam ball. I don't know if you guys know what that is. Slam ball is this, um, this is four and four basketball where they can tackle each other and they have trampolines in front of the rims. And they just, it's like these 20 mile an hour. What we, we play every other month in immersion. Yeah, Same. basically, but, yeah. but we don't have tram we don't have trampolines in immersion. Uh, guys, give me a second. I'm still going to talk to you. I'm just going to turn my camera off for 30 seconds here. Okay. Um, but yeah, so like when I take the girls, the reason why girls show up is because other girls show up. You guys understand this concept? It's like girls show up because other girls show up. And when you grasp that, I goes. I keep going back to the Regina George thing or the Lindsay Palos thing. When you can show that level of pre-selection, 
that's the reason why people are going to show up to your thing. It's not because it's not because you you put cool graphics or you use cool words in your in your uh, invite. It's because you showed social proof that other people want to come to whatever it is that you're doing. And so when you do that, then you get incredible amounts of response of responses. So for instance, the social proof with regards to the maximum party is. Number one, it's the maximum party. So you're a guy who can actually get girls into a maximum party. You're a guy who actually had access to a maximum party. That do you guys understand? This is, this is I'm getting way ahead of myself. Sorry, I'm heavily caffeinated. Um, <laughs> okay. How many pills to, today? I want you to consider this, right? So the very fact that you invited a girl to the maximum party. You guys, think about this. Your 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 status when a woman doesn't know who you are is zero. Negative. <laughs> When you hit a, it's a negative. You're a creepy dude. 86% of men, so you see like 80% of men on uh, Tinder are, are deemed unattractive. You're in that 80% because she, she doesn't know anything about you. Right. If you legitimately have access to get her on the red carpet of the Maxim party, do you understand by that alone, you show competence. And here's the thing. Every one of you, Chuck Hong, Raymond, Philip Vasquez, Jamar Ra, every single one of you, Matt Nunn, Ev Facundo, every one of you, every single one of you has the ability to get a girl on the red carpet at Maxim. Every one of you, because you know me, because you know me, you can. And I don't take credit for it. All she knows is she's going to show up to the party. She's going to get on the red carpet. And when she hits you up, be like, Raymond, are you here? You'd be like, oh, sorry, I couldn't make it. But did you have a good time? She's like, yes. You still have an open thread and you've got 100% credit for getting her in that party. You guys see how you can show competency from these events and you don't even have to fucking be there. Well, so Michael, <laughs> so, sorry. So Michael, let's say someone does something like that. They send over their list to you because half, half the point of this is you send out 100, 200 invites the, all the girls that say no, it's still equally as valuable because they get to see that you have access to the maximum party. No, correct. And, yes. But let's say now the girl, let's say a couple of girls do say yes. They send them over to, to someone like you. Now, how do they capitalize on that momentum built up after the fact? Um, so let's do I, I'm switching over. Can you can sure. you guys pull me on the main thing here? Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. And while Michael switches over, guys, anyone that does have questions for Michael, feel free to drop them in the chat. We're going to try to guide Michael through some pragmatic things that apply to everyone on the call. Me, 10 seconds, guys. I'm going to put my headphones on. Yeah. Sorry, they were doing... Uh, I I, I whore out my den for guys on my team to do sales calls. So sometimes uh, I don't get to do this. Let me see here. Let's go to AirPods. That's a nice backdrop, Mike. You like oh, that? Yeah. A nice backdrop. It's fabulous. <laughs> it is, man. It is. All right. So, uh, you know, go back to what we said before. Uh, what was the question? Let's say, let's say they go through this process. They actually get some girls to go to a maximum event that they are not yet able to go to yet. How do you take that momentum built up from that and actually capitalize it or leverage it? Yeah. So for me, the thing is, so he now he's showing the uh, Maxa party that we did in Miami. And you'll see in Miami, it's a very different vibe. Girls wear next to nothing, lots of pasties, lots of exposed breasts. It's a very different. The the one in Miami was different than the one we did in, uh, in, in Los Angeles. So uh, also... Every girl in Miami came to this one. Whereas when we're in Los Angeles, we're actually competing with a lot of other shit. We didn't really have a ton to compete with here. That's why. And we also had future. Uh, this is another example. Like this is a great example of a party. I guarantee you they didn't make money on this party because they had to hire future in order to like be the performer for this. So um, what you do afterwards is again, go back to your social media. You, if you guys look, so he's showing my, my social media right out there on the right. If you guys look at some of the women who like the photos if you just look at that, the, some of the girls who like like the photos, you'll see that they're still yeah. Go to the one that one for my birthday. Now go up there to the likes. I don't know if you can pull up the likes. Which just birthday, go to the, that, that one mean? right there. That one right there. No, the, that's my birthday. Yeah, yeah. So this is what my birthday party looked like, guys. If you guys go to, can you guys just go to the likes there? If you guys look like Danny Marie, like you'll see that there's a bunch of like really stunning girls. I'm sorry, there's a ton of dudes on here too. I, I could show you from my standpoint, but there's um when you see some of the girls that like the photos, that's how you're connecting. When you keep creating good content, you're going to see them kind of connecting with you. And the other thing I do is, uh, this is really funny, Kindly Myers sends me a new meme every single day, without exception. She sends me a new meme to every single 24-hour period. She sends me a different meme. And that's how we communicate with each other. Same thing with me and Katie. So when it's like really pretty girls, a lot of times we'll just send each other uh 
we'll just send each other content. You'll see kindly, like she likes all my photos. She loves my girlfriend. She like, we, we talk every day. Kindly is the Regina George that I'm talking about. And you see, look, do you guys see Mac kindly is going to Maxim Carnival in Las Vegas. Do you guys see that August uh, 18th and 19th at IU day club in Las Vegas. So kindly is going to come here to this Maxim party. And then if I want to, I've already got, um, uh, I got an invite from uh, Kim Hennessy. She was like, Hey, bring as many girls as you want to Maxim Carnival. We'll, we'll put them on the list. When I do that, I, I, I'll tell them, hey, Kindly is going to be there. And then all these other girls show up because of, of, of what it is that I'm showing, because she's the leader of the group. There's no, what I'm, what I'm saying is, if you guys are talking to girls who want to be social media influencers and they see that this girl's going, they're all going to go. It's these small groups of people that cause all these other people to want to come to your thing. It's, it's, it's essentially, always a matter of social proof. What was the original question though, Ashkan? Well, so actually let's, here. yeah, let's go, let's go one step back, Michael, because some of this stuff is a bit more nuanced and kind of advanced yeah. too. Let's cover the, let's cover guys that are a bit more new to this. Mm -hmm. Almost everyone on this call will probably not argue with any of us because it would be a waste of their time, the importance of having female friends. But yeah. let's say I'm a guy who wants to improve his Instagram. So I'm already taking action there, but I don't have a network of female friends. Yeah. Right. So that's so, your, so 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 yeah, step number one. Start that. The one more time. One more time from the free from the free uh you know course I give. Step number one is to build your Instagram. Step number two is to build your list, and then step number three is going to be to find those events to take people to, and then step number four is going is is going to be to find six girls to take to those events. So what you're going to do in, in that in that case when you're trying to build this list is you're going to build a huge list. You can use other people to help you build a list. So like for instance, you know I have an LA list. I give to everyone. But here's the thing, guys. If your Instagram sucks, I could give you every list I have. Like you understand, if Corey gave you the number to every girl he knew, you could call all of them. You're not gonna fuck any of them because your IG is fucked up. If you look like a child molester, it doesn't make any goddamn difference. If you're sitting there, uh, fucking, you have all my lists. You can have my LA list, my bikini model list. I can give them all to you. If you don't do step one, which is your fix your IG, it's never gonna work for you. Okay. So that's the first thing, right? In order to build that. The second thing is in the beginning. So for me, I'll get 50% show up rate. That's pretty high. Bulzarian will probably get like 80% show up rate. Uh, Maxim party, you're going to get 80% show up rate. An actual, an actual Playboy mansion party, you're going to get a 90% show up rate. Okay. A bikini competition, you're going to get about a 50% show up rate. But like, for instance, for you guys, for your first couple of events, you're going to get 5%, 10%. And that's the thing. Initially, you're you're trying to you're trying to break a boulder with your fist. If, if it, in, initially, the first couple of times, you're trying to throw pebbles at a, at an aircraft carrier. It's hard, and you're going to have a very low show up rate. But the reason why this is something that's really interesting and that a lot of my guys grasp initially, the learning curve is so hard in the beginning that later on, it's it's really really easy, and you can actually use other people's social proof in order to help you get there. But initially, the reason why it's hard and the reason why it's so good that it's hard, it's not bad that it's hard. It's good that it's hard because once you figure out this first part, you have no competition. No competition. Yeah. None. Like I have open threads with 4,000 girls on my Instagram. Like that. So what, what other club promoters don't have that? Why do I have that? Because for every one of these events, I send out invites to those girls on my list. Now it takes time because you can only do 50 new invites an hour or something like that. Also, do you, uh, Corey, I meant to tell you this. This is uh, some new free, um, some new free information for you. You guys know the the new uh, Instagram update, right? You can only send one message to a girl and you can't unsend it. Yeah. By the way, guys, another thing, we always unsend previous messages. If a girl does not if a girl does not see a previous message and we invite her to so we invite her to the first event, she doesn't see it and then we invite her to a second event, we always unsend the first event, always. Also, if a girl we invite a girl to a first event and then she says yes to the second event, we still unsend the first message. We never want to look like a bugaboo ever. When it, <laughs> I know it's Sounds so fucking stupid, but there's this weird thing in women's mind psycho psychologically when they see multiple um, uh, fucking messages from you and they don't respond where they get some level of validation and they see you as lower status. You always, mm -hmm. all, there's a reason why we do this on Instagram because Instagram has a full unsend feature with no tombstone. Even on iChat, there's a tombstone. It shows you that you unsend. Even on Facebook Messenger, there's a tombstone. Even on WhatsApp, there's a tombstone. It shows that you unsent a message. For us on IG, there is no tombstone. It doesn't show that you unsend. So we always want to do this on, on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Okay. So 
once you do that, th- this is this is the part that is so fucking fantastic. You so so every other guy when they send a girl a message, they can't send a second message. Corey, you know this, right? This is a new update. Yeah, the There's a way thing. to get around it. Do you know? Do you guys know the, the way to get around it? You guys know? It was actually Anthony Dorico who found this. Huh? Block them. Block them. <laughs> actually, <laughs> dude, I would. beat Corey. Corey, that's not the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Oh, that thanks. actually might work. Yeah, exactly. I, I could have. I could said something stupider. <laughs> <laughs> that is not cut. Have you tried that, Corey? That actually would work because, it, by the way, I've well, I'll about try this. it if when you, I recover my self esteem. So, so if you block, a, yeah, I never thought about this. I don't do that. Like, experiment with this with someone you don't care about. But I believe if you block a girl, it actually deletes the entire um, message thread. So, if you unblock them, then it would start a new message thread. And you might be able to say, I don't know yeah. that that won't work, but there is one thing I do will work. What is something Instagram will always let you do with a girl for her story, her fucking reels? and her uh and her photos do you know what it is no you can always reply try it a girl a a girl who won't receive your messages if you send her her own photo with your text you will break through all of those barriers i just mentioned even the limit i don't know if you know this Corey. even the limit the limiter was 50 an hour you can Mm -hmm. break the 50 an hour limiter if you send them their own photo no way. How crazy is that? That's cool. Yes. So you can break, if you get to a point where like, hey man, I can't send any more messages to girls. Or there's another thing where it wouldn't let you pull up a girl's, um, uh, like uh, uh, like you try to search for a girl's message and it said, I will not open a thread. Have you seen that before, Corey? Where it yeah. says, will not open a thread. Yeah. If you send her her own picture, it pulls her back up to the very top. Then you can delete the picture you sent of her and you can de- then you can message her from that. That's funny. I don't know. I don't know you got this technical, Michael. This well, I have to, bro. I mean, this is how I do these <laughs> events. I, mean, I, I get 70, 80 girls to throw to go to an event with me. It's, dude, we have completely reverse engineered uh, yeah. IGDM completely. Dorico does it even more than me. So I have people who do it for me now, but initially, like, I was the one who came up with a lot of these ideas on how to do it. Now, once you guys have an open thread with girls, you have them forever. But here's a couple of things that's pretty crazy. Can I take over for a second? I'm going to show you guys my insights real quick on, uh, IG because this is a, a really hard thing for people to grasp. Super logical. No, those of you guys, because I see some of you guys are in MOA. Those of you who are in MOA are already going to know this. But um, uh, see the the dashboard right here. Okay, so we'll go to the my dashboard and we go right here to accounts reached up at the top for the last month. Okay, real quick, what do you guys notice about accounts reached? What what is the outlier here? Post stories and reels. What's the outlier? I don't know if they can unmute themselves. Put it in but the it's chat. A, it's a, what's the outlier? Not, look look at look at my engagement here. It's seven hundred thirty three thousand are Mm non-followers. 46,000 are followers. You guys understand? That means over 90% of my engagement comes from people who don't follow me. This is super important for you guys to understand. Those of you like, I don't have a big following. I don't know what to do. Do I have to pay for followers? I don't know. 90% of my engagement come from people who (laughs) don't follow me. Which means, should I post less or should I post more? Yeah, I just just give it up. No traction, right? Yeah. So yeah. just give it up. You have nothing. Yeah. Um, but like the, how do you get that? How do you do that? It's for us. We post, I post two or three reels a day. That's how I get so much. I don't recommend you guys all post two or three reels a day unless you're running a business, right. but, but that's where you get this, this new engagement from is from these people who don't follow you. Now, remember what I said before about the open threads, Corey, have you ever talked about somebody and then all of a sudden looked on your IG and it would just show that person? Have you, has that oh, ever really? happened to you yeah. all the time? Post? Yeah. So if you, if you fucking message back and forward with somebody, the likelihood of you seeing their content goes up. It's just something to do with the algorithm. Even a girl who doesn't follow you, if all of a sudden you guys message, she just does one message back and forward, all of a sudden this content, look at guys, one more time, 733,000 followers who don't follow uh, accounts that don't follow me. IG is just picking accounts that are correlated to mine and showing my content to those people. How do you, so it's like, how do I get these super high uh, high status influencers to to notice me? You're going to have what do the first four steps. Like I said, step number one, build your uh, fix your Instagram. Step number two, build your list. Step number three, find the events to invite girls to, which shows what it shows competency. It's very like we use it as almost like a cheat code for cold approach. Like a lot of guys, they do cold approach and they have all these lines set up. My cold approach is always the same thing. Hey, what's going on? I have a sixty thousand dollar bikini competition. Would you like to come compete? That's always my cold approach. And they, the girls are like. Yes. And can I get your number? Like immediately that's the response. Right. And so now we have open threads and then they start seeing my content and you'll just start seeing them like my content. And I have girls come up to me all the time and they're like, Hey, you know, I I watch your podcast or whatever. And they'll hit me up like when they see me or the other thing that happens is every week I have girls hit me up and they're like, Hey, I'm in town. Can you take me out? Right. And then I obviously have to show them to my girlfriend first, but then like, do we like her or not? And so, so that's what you do all the time. 
Why do you do that? Because you have a comp, you have, you show competency, you show competency on your social media profile. Do you show competency? Do you show social proof? Like here I am with fucking King Batch. He's got 25 million fucking followers on IG. Like, do you show competency or like, you know what I'm saying? Like with this one, it's not only that Kristen Schultz is in the photo with me. It's that she also liked the photo. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you show irrefutable visual evidence? So when I say, Hey girls, do you want to come to my bikini competition? They'll see this video and they'll be like, yes, they'll walk down. They'll they'll be like, yes, they'll walk down. Exactly. Walk down the Michael stairs. Exactly. Like, do you show competency? Like there's, you know, me and Ty Lopez and fucking, uh, uh, what's Dan his Fleischman. face? Dan Fleischman. So the thing is, if you can show that any level of competency, but like here's what, like which with, with Corey, right? What is Corey going to do? Corey is is going to show competency in a different way because he is going to show this incredible ability for him to like, again with the photos that he was just showing you before. But he's going to show competency with his ability to take photos, his ability to produce content. Like a lot of girls are going to see this and immediately be like, yeah, dude, this is what I want. If Corey was inviting girls to an event, they'd be a hundred times more likely to show up because he shows competency than you do. This is why I have so many guys hit me up and they're like, hey, Michael, just give me your list. Tell me the secrets to getting these girls. And I'm like, well, first you got to fix your Instagram. And they don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that they have to put in work. Guys, the outward perception of who you are inwardly is so fucking important because we're hairless murder apes and we only care about we're we're shallow fucking human beings and we only care about shit like this. We do. This is why we pick our girlfriends. This is why we pick what football team we pull for is because we show people who show competency. We're just far more likely to follow them and listen to them. So that's why even though it comes off as shallow, these are some of the things you have to do in order to uh, to make it work. And the thing is, I'm not asking you guys to like buy a house. I'm asking you to fix your fucking Instagram with 15 photos. Like it's well, not so Michael, that hard. So, so real quick. So the reason that the reason they should fix their Instagram is because even if they had access to the girls, it wouldn't matter because their Instagram is not sufficient. On the right. other hand, so the flip side of that coin then is the, one of the common pitfalls is guys will work on their IG. They'll invite out hundreds of girls. They'll even get access to parties like we just saw at the, the Maxim event. Yeah. They still don't know how to fucking talk to a girl. Yeah. So they still so, have uh, that component. And one of the things that you do that's underrated that I don't hear you talk about enough is that you actually are out consistently. Yeah. You're actually out consistently. So what is the importance? So again, if I'm if I'm if I'm new to it and I'm building up my IG and I'm trying to create that list of female friends, right? What can I do on a night to night basis in my city to facilitate that process that also improves my actual game? Yeah. So so we we call it value arbitrage, which is three. There's three parts to it. It is connector, suggester, and content creator, right? So connector, what am I doing? I'm constantly introduced. Like if you guys would just get used to introducing hot women to hot women, that would be enough. Also, most of my guy friends meet girls. Like Corey's met a couple of girls. Ashkan, you probably met a couple of girls who just coming to my events. Happens all the time where you're connecting people to each other. So I'm also all the time at the, these bikini competitions or these different events, I'm always connecting girls to other girls or connecting guys to these girls constantly. That's so connector. Suggester is for me, I love suggesting books. That's a big one for me. Books, TV shows, movies, where to go to dinner, uh, what to go hang out at. Suggesting go to Babes in Toyland, suggesting go to Paradise Challenge, suggesting go to Model Citizen Fund, suggesting that they go to um, Smash Global, suggesting that they go to Swimsuit Michael, USA. Michael, when you make suggest- that, when you make the suggestions, are you looking for openings where it comes up naturally? You don't give a fuck. You're just going to throw shit at the wall and see what sticks. No, no. I, you, so what you're going to do is, you're, I, okay, so we can go back to like the four logistical questions. I think you right. guys still do that, right? We do it too. It's like, hey, who are you here with? Um, you know, uh, the four logistical. Bro, it's been a while. Uh, who, so who, who, who are you here with? Where are you staying? Saying when you, basically when, for Vegas, it's when are you leaving Vegas and what are you doing later tonight? Yeah, what are you what are you doing later uh, tonight and what are you doing tomorrow? That's what I'll yeah. ask. And then from there, I'll be like, oh, cool. Will you be in town on the twenty fifth? And the girl is never going to say yes, guys. You won't be in town on the twenty fifth. Oh, that sucks. We're hosting a sixty thousand dollar bikini competition, really. And then you show them while you're doing that. Uh, or, hey, oh, we're hosting a charity event for Animal Rescue on the 24th. By the way, just to let you guys know this advanced shit, Animal Rescue is a cheat code. Animal Rescue is like, if you if you invite girls to an Animal Rescue charity, they're always going to say yes. It's it's like Animal Rescue is like the ultimate fucking cheat code for, for these events. Also fostering um, eight cats. Yeah, fostering. Yeah, I'm well, fostering eight. I'm fostering three. Um, so... <laughs> Sorry, I yeah, love so, how Michael's like, that's not accurate. Wow. It's only three. Exactly so bad, three. Michael. Sorry, <laughs> I got the number wrong. It's only three. Uh, <laughs> so, but, but going back to what you said, like 
So when you're when you do this, when you invite them to these events, you're always the one suggesting to these people. I haven't even seen this. This is great stuff. Uh, you're, you're suggesting. You're, you're suggesting. Hey, let's go to. So after this, uh, I took a bunch of girls to uh, what's that? What's that place Slam called? Um, no, not Slam Ball. We went to uh, uh, Kaizen. I only took four girls to Slam Ball after this. By the way, like yeah, every on the Friday after right after the bikini competition, I take girls to go see Slam Ball over at uh, UNLV. Um, so, so that's, I thought that's that was one thing. for taking them back home. Slam ball. No, sl go slam ball. No, no, it's, it's actually, it's actually a, a game that we play <laughs> in your um, house or in, you know, at, uh, at Cox Pavilion. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's funny. Play slam ball at Cox Pavilion. Yes. That's pretty good. Exactly. That's the whole point. So, so, so I always, so remember I said connector, suggester, content creator. So connecting, I'm connecting these girls together, right? Suggester, I'm suggesting where to go afterwards and other things to do. And then content creator. Content creator means what we're doing right now. Um, I went out with um, with uh, CJ Sparks last night. And like, if you just went up to CJ, I asked her, I was like, CJ, if some guy came up to you and said, hey, let's make a funny TikTok. She'd be like, I don't need to know anything about the dude. I will stop everything I'm doing. I will make a funny TikTok with this guy. If you are just a content creator, meaning like you're just, you just take your phone out and start making videos, people will stop anything they're doing. You know what? I'm going to do this real quick because this is a this is a big point of contention. Uh, I know. So the problem is my highlights don't even show up on my phone anymore because I have too many fucking highlights. Uh, can you go to my highlights? Go to go all the way to the beginning. Go, go No, not the beginning. Go to the end. I'm sorry. Go to the end. End or beginning. I should say summer events. Go to summer events. Let's see if that one pulls up. Summer events are it, it'll take a while to pull up. But what I want to show you guys is like some of these videos that I do, we call them like the Snapchat opener. Go go, go through a couple more. A lot of times, this is my opener. Now, that's, I, that's obviously my girlfriend. Click click to the right. Let's see if we can find one where I, I just meet some girls. There you go. Back. So this is what it looks like with me. I literally, guys, I know you won't believe this. I pull out my phone and girls just start performing. It's all, it's crazy. Girls will be on their phone, not paying any attention to you, nothing. You pull out your phone and girls just start performing in front of you. Until you do it, you're never going to believe that it works. You're going to be like, Michael, what do you say to the girl? Go back, go back one. This is a great example. Go back one, go back one. Yeah, okay, that one. I'm sorry, go forward, go forward one more. Yeah, That one. Like you, the girls just stop. Do you see how they all orient towards the camera as soon as I start filming? Guys, I'm telling you, that's all you do is you pull the camera out and you start recording and watch all the girls just climb behind you. So you're asking, what do you do in those situations? You are the connector, you're the suggester, and you're the content creator. Now, Michael, are, like, you doing, are you doing one suggestion? It's whatever the key kind of thing is. The event if, it's super loud, if it's super loud, I'm... If it's super loud, I'm going to do content creation. And then once I start talking to them, I might ask the logistical questions and then go straight into like so inviting them to things. So think about like you have a magazine, you know, for a gun and you're just loading bullets into the magazine. For me, I have the next 10 events loaded up. I already know it's going to be uh, August 17th is Access Vegas. August 24th is Babes in Toyland. August 25th is going to be the bikini competition. August so what 31st. Are you, what are you looking for? From her. Oh, I'm down her. For I, don't, I don't care. I'm just, I'm, yeah, yeah, for sure. So she's going to want, like, personally, I would rather have her on my IG than get her phone number. Of course. And by the way, so what I'm saying is, let's say you tell her, like, hey, are you in town? No, I'm not too bad. We're doing the $60,000 bikini competition. And she goes, oh my God, I want to be part of that. And then you do what? And then, then you're like, okay, cool. Just look, look, look me up on Instagram. I make them look me up on Instagram and then follow me. That's funny. You say okay. look me up on Instagram? Yeah, look. I, I tell them look me up. The other thing I'll do is I'll make a video with them. Now, here's the thing. Some of you guys, I know some of you guys can't post picture videos with girls like this. So like this is fine for me on my story. But let's say you guys didn't want to do this. Instead, uh, here, keep going. Let me see if I can find another one. Let's see if there's another one where I'm... Um, Keep going. Uh, damn, there's a lot of those fucking things. Keep going. I'm trying to find one where the girls are all behind me. Uh, not this one. Keep going. Keep going until you find one where there's like a bunch of girls behind me. Because I want to show you like somewhere. Like I literally, guys, this is cold approach. Like I know some of you think that I know all the girls behind me. That is just not true. A lot of the times I don't even know the girls who are behind me. Oh, go to the throwback one. Oh, look at that one. That's the throwback at, at Bulzarian. This is at Bulzarian's house. We took 38 girls to Bulzarian's house and had a photo shoot there. You know, uh, back to what you're saying. A lot of times I just pull out my phone. And when I pull out my phone, all of these fucking, the girls just start performing behind me. And it's it's just, it really is amazing. And I don't have to, yeah. Oh, the, you know, do you know Vitaly's girlfriend? Do you know, I used to date her. Did I ever tell you guys that? No. 
Nope. Yeah. Yeah. His current girlfriend, Delia Rose. Yeah. I used to, this is way before she was famous. She used to come out to Vegas to, or to visit me. So going, yeah, here's my birthday party. You know, same thing here. Like we're just creating content I, on my birthday party. I'm like introducing all these girls to other girls. We're constantly creating content. So that's essentially what, what happens is you're, you're doing that. And when you pull out your phone, girls who don't even know who you are, will stop what they're doing and they'll jump in there to start talking to you. It's one of the wildest things you'll ever, until you do it, you, you guys will not believe it's true until you actually fucking do it. And then the other thing I was going to say is, uh, you're going to make a video and then you and the, uh, you, oh, wow. That's, I can't believe this. Oh, crazy, man. Yeah. This was my birthday party at, uh, <laughs> Pascal's house. I totally forgot about this. Wrong yeah, person. That was, that was a fucking wild shit. night, dude. She kicked. No, hair. no, he, we have, we have the same birthday. We have almost similar oh, birthday. Really? me and me and, uh, uh, Barry Bly. Yeah. Um, so, so going back to what I said before the, um, damn it. What was it? Um, oh yeah. I forgot about this one. This is my this is my performing birthday party selfie cold approach. Yeah, it, it, yeah, but you're you're gonna do this and you're gonna make a video with a girl and then you're gonna either one of three things. One, if you're no, if you have no problem with this, you're not. I, I say like, oh, okay, here's a great example. I don't know Dalen Mazer. Do you see her right here on my shoulder, like putting her fucking arm on me? I don't. Let me say this again. Show this video again. You, you, so you've known her for years, know right? No, Dalen Mazer. I don't know her. <laughs> I have never. She does not have my number. She doesn't know me. One more time. I pull up my camera and I start filming. And you know her. You've known her for years, right? Is there I don't know Dalen Mazur. Do you guys see this? That's family, basically. Look at, look, guys, just, that guys, look at that level of compliance. Look at that fucking reaction. I just pulled out my phone. That was all I did. Connector, suggester, content creator. Okay? Now, um, so, so let's just say, like, I bet Dalen, right? But let's say I'm going through a divorce and I can't post videos of me with hot girls. Let's say I can, right? Or so far, I don't know that girl on the left. I know her, obviously, but um, on the far left, I have never, that was the first time I met that girl on the far left. And she, you see how she just climbs into the video? Okay, why is this happening? It's happening because when they see that, w w as men, we want sex. Generally, we get sexual validation from women. Women want attention. And so we kind of like, use the attention uh, leverage to get them to validate us and to come to whatever it is we want to do. And also the other thing is if you learn how to take good videos, like what Corey does, or if you learn how to use face app, face tune, like, you know, stuff like that. And the, the girls always get their best pictures with you. You're going to notice a lot more girls are going to want to take pictures with you. 100%. That's another, that's another part of this. Um, but, but Michael, so when you, when you're in person, then, right, you put out mm -hmm. your phone, they're responding the way that you want. You've done a future projection of you, you've exchanged Instagrams. Now, is that your only goal when you're there with them in person is to collect the information and invite them to future events or so, so, any other goal when you're actually face to face in person? Okay. So, so it, it's like, it's like different levels of a video game. You know, how some people die before they get out of the first uh, level of Super Mario Brothers. Mm -hmm. For me, it's like, I'll connect. Oh, let, let me go back to my previous point because I kept forgetting it. If you can't show videos of you with girls on your IG, what you do is you either use close friends list. Or you literally send her the video in IGDM. If you can, then you see like what I did here, where is you post it on your story. But what happens is the girl's following you and you have a video of the two of you together. You're a hundred thousand more times more likely to for that girl to remember you and to respond than some creepy pickup artist who got her fucking phone number at bungalow in Santa Monica. Okay. You're a hundred thousand times more likely to keep uh, to keep her on top of mind, and she'll like the photo. She's far more likely to respond to you. Like, just look at the girls. Like, look at the way they just react. They're like, "Please let me get in your camera." I'm nobody, guys. They're just they're like pushing each other, coming over my shoulder to just get their face on video. You guys, if you fully understood the level of like, I don't want to say narcissism, but like the level of like validation that women need, the, the level of attention and validation they get from just being on someone's video. You, if you completely understood that concept, you would have no trouble ever attracting women to come to your events or do anything like that. That's all this is. No, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Okay. I don't know them. Watch this. I don't know them. I don't know these girls. Like the other okay. girls. Now, not these. Yeah, ones, later on, later on, I may, let, no, no, I know them now because they came to Paradise Challenge with us. He's but been at the this slam point, ball. I don't know them. Do you see this? Guys, again, look at, look at the level of compliance just because I have a fucking camera. You know how, how annoying it is to see these young girls. You're like trying to talk to them and they're on their phone the whole time. Use it against them. Use it against them. Use your phone 
Instead, like if a girl's going to be on her phone the whole time, that's fine. Then she's going to be on her on phone all the all the time with me. Use it against them, guys. That's the trick. Okay. All right, Michael, hold on. Let's, let, let's pause real quick because we want to give you a chance to also plug Moa as well too. For anyone that's interested in learning more about Michael and about Moa, this course, was the this was the day I met. The, this is the second day I met my girlfriend. She just jumps into this video with me. Corey, can we drop the link for the guys yeah. in the chat? Michael, what's the best? Yeah, for sure. Just Moa.com. What Moa? Uh, no, no. Uh, let's do the school server. Let's do the uh, the free school server. How do we find it? Hold on. Give me one second. I'm going to pull Michael, it up for you, you wanna, right now. Yeah, if you want to drop it in. I'm going to copy paste it. I'm going to copy paste it in yeah. here for you. Okay. Log in. Uh, all right. Let me go back to you guys. And then, Wait. Michael, let's let's quickly come off just to, for a sec because I want to get to some of the guys' questions that they dropped in here as well. And then we can come There's back. There's a school server right there. Guys, check it out in the chat. Sweet. Yeah, we're dropping it in the chat right now. If you guys would like to, it's so the school server is just a, your open face community, Michael. Yeah, it's about thirteen hundred guys in there, and it's just like we we. So for instance, let's say, hey man, I live in Florida. You can go to the school server, find the other guys who live in Florida. You're like, hey man, I want to, you know, I want to learn the first four steps of MOA. Those are all in there. You're like, hey man, I want to, uh, I want to see the other testimonials or other guys who fix their Instagram. You can go do that. Or if you're like, hey, I want to see Michael's book list that he has and all the other parts. Like you see all the success stories that are down there. You can just go through all the success stories. Each one of them has their own video. You guys see that? All these success stories. You're welcome. By the way, another thing that's very different is because my program actually works. You are all welcome to message any one of the guys you see in these success stories. Please message them. They'll all give me a testimonial. I'm not the slightest bit worried about it. There's hundred, and if these aren't enough, I'll give you another hundred testimonials after that. So, Michael, okay. let's, let's let's hammer through some quick questions from the guys. Sure. One of the first questions is from uh, Joel. He says he hasn't heard much of a discussion about budget. Okay, so when it comes to throwing events. Just let's kind of go big picture here. How do you manage the financial part of not just the maximum events, which we talked about earlier, but let's try to make it more relatable for the guys that are on the call. Guys that want to do comp dinners, comp tables, obviously comp suggests that they're free. Zero. But when it comes to spending money, how can you live this lifestyle or a version of it that's attainable for the guys and still keep costs low? Yeah. So one of the main selling points of our program is that we teach you this lifestyle without spending money. So I want, so, it, and now I'm going to tell you, it's hard. There's some cheat codes that you could have. I've had some clients that are pretty wealthy and they're like, yeah, Michael, I don't want to find girls to like help me find a free venue in order to do a photo shoot. Cause you guys know, like it's pretty common. Everyone here, you know, we use Jeff Shea's house. We use Michael Evers house. We'll use the, the, the wish mansion at, at 750 dragon Ridge or we're in L LA like toy Hardy will hook me up with a mansion or I'll go to like one Oh nine, seven, nine Shalon road, the, the Bel Air Bilzerian house. And they'll just let me use it for free. Why is that? It's because of social connections I made. But in the beginning, I didn't have those connections. So in the beginning, if you are going to spend any money, it might be to rent a place for four hours on Gigster for a photo shoot or something like that. Or, but, but most of the time, the way it's going to work is for a charity event, you can usually get someone to like donate a venue for a certain period of time. Or, um, this is the, this is the main thing, Ashcon, is that in the beginning, I want you to not throw an event. I want you to take, remember step number four is not to throw an event. Step number four is to take six girls to someone else's event. So when I go do model citizen fund on August 31st, when I go to that, I'm going to bring like 50, 60, 70 girls with me to that event. When I go to the event, I'm not interested in throwing it. I'm not going to do any of the catering. I have nothing to do with any of that. I'm only going to concern myself with um, getting girls to show up. And then when I'm there, Probably me, Ashkan, and Corey, we're going to film content. I'm going to do some red carpet interviews. And then, then we're going to go into the party and have a good time. So I, I I don't, I implore you guys to not start off by throwing your own events, but help other people with their events. I'll tell you, throwing your own event, while it's it's not easy, it's rote. It's very like cut and paste and push button, push button, and catering shows up. Push button, and there's a step and repeat. Push button, and then there's lighting. For to get six girls to go with you or to a, another event, there has to be charisma, breaks in rapport. There has to be commonalities. You have to find a girl who's a champion who all the other girls look up to. It's way more of an art getting six girls to go with you to an event than it is a science, which is throwing your own event. I'm more interested in the art. You guys need to learn the skill set of like developing charisma and breaking rapport. So that, that I would tell you in the beginning, you don't need to spend money. What you need to do is find someone else who has a cool event and then bring girls to that event. That's way more of, a, of an important skill set. Once you can bring six girls to other people's events on a regular basis, now you're ready to throw your own event. Because I'll tell you what will happen. I could teach you guys how to throw sick ass photo shoots. Now it was easier during COVID because there were no nightclubs and it was like super, there's no day pools or whatever. But um, I can teach you guys how to throw incredible photo shoots. But if you throw the photo shoot 
What'll happen is because you weren't able to get six girls to go with you to another event, you're going to go to the photo shoot. You're going to drool yep. in front of a bunch of hot fucking girls. Not know how to drool girls, you're either. not going to make, you're not going to know how to behave. You're going to try to hit on them or act weird or do something you learn from a pickup routine. And you're not going to know what to do instead of the, the value arbitrage shit. And because you, you these girls aren't on your side, you're not going to know how to act. And what you're going to do is you're going to be even lower status at a fucking photo shoot. I've had several guys who they don't take MOA. What they'll do is they'll, they'll do my free course or they'll, they'll get on my free calls and they'll use the information to throw their own events and they'll throw events and they're just weird dudes at events they've thrown. Instead yep. of what I want you to do is be super calibrated. So you have a choice. Are you a weird guy at an event you threw? Or are you a super calibrated guy at someone else's event? I'd rather you be a super calibrated guy where there's a bunch of women coming up and like, like that girl on the right is Laura Louise. She ended up winning the competition Laura, And that girl on the left, who's touching me, that's fucking Sierra Nowak. Those are two good friends of mine. Both of them are like in relationships. I'm not trying to hook up with either one of them, but both of them, if I what like when I was trying to hook up with my girl who became my girlfriend, Laura was like giving me the assist. Sierra was giving me the assist. These are my wing girls because those two girls went to do a thing because they're both former champions of swimsuit USA. All the other girls follow along. You guys understand all the other girls jump, follow along and they feel, and now look at these other girls. Now they want to jump in the video because they saw Laura Louise and Sierra Nowak. Now Brie Connors and fucking uh, uh, Teresa Tomasova. Now they want to jump in. They want to be part of the, the whole thing because they see the other girls want to be a part of it. It's a, it's like one of the things that, you know, is really great with Corey, you know, coming to all the events is that he literally gets video of how social proof works. He'll see social proof from two girls, which will lead to social proof from other. You, again, you see Sarita. Sarita's just shaking her butt on there. Why she, I didn't, I promise you, I never, I swear to you, I did not ask you, Sarita. So you to said shake like, Hey, ass. Sarita, can you shake your butt and then grab me? Right. Nothing. She just, oh, you just, just turn the camera on and she just starts performing. You guys get it like that. I mean, I can't express it to you enough. This is the, this is how that reality works. Um, but, Michael, so, let, let's add a couple of things about the money side as well, too. Just to, okay. just to kind of wrap that question up. So one for anyone here considering a move, cause Joel, like you're not going to want to hear this answer, but like a magic bullet too, is just come to Vegas. Because yeah. in, in Las Vegas, it is the only place where you can get comps, the things that people pay five, ten, twenty thousand dollars for on an average weekend, we get for free because of the structure of the nightlife that's set up here. The other component of it too is, is that Vegas is a small town where you can build up a network, you can get these comps. But also one kind of important note too about the money side of things. If you have a skill set or a value offer, there will be people whose only offer is money that will want to work with you. Michael, one of your biggest things that you offer is that you have a list of girls. The way you get access to a Dan Blazarian party is not just because Dan loves you, it's because you recruit for it at a high level. For us, for Corey and I, being able to create content like what you guys are seeing here is our ticket to a lot of things that people would normally have to pay thousands of dollars for. So if you're able to build a list of women that becomes a currency and a value, that offsets you not having money. And for some other guys, it's okay to, if you have money in abundance, I don't know, Michael, if you would agree with this, but if you have money in abundance, it just becomes another tool. You don't have to do this without money. It's recognizing what you have, yes. you can build up at the same time. But, but you but, but you need to do this without money in the beginning. It's like, it's like a guy who wants to take fucking PEDs or steroids or whatever, and he starts taking steroids before he goes to the gym. No, you want to go to the gym first and then, then add on right? You want to be good with women first and then use money. If you use money first, you, I meet so many guys. So <laughs> is this spamming or callback? You, they, it, I see, I meet so many guys frequently. What they'll do is they'll start off by using money and then, uh, then I'll put them in a, in a tough situation with women. And immediately when things get hard, they resort right back to money. Immediately they go back to money. Oh, well, let me use money in order to pay for all of your dinners or to fly you out here. Let me let me fly out this group of women who I've never slept with to go yeah, hang so out let's, with me. Let's that's that's an important note too. When we say money as well, obviously we don't mean go to Tropicana at two in the morning and spend money. Anyone who knows who's in Vegas knows what I'm talking about. That's not what we're referring to too. Like using money, for example, being able to secure a location that comes at a cost. Everyone has done that to some extent if they have money as a resource. Being able to hire content creators to come and get content at your event is another good use of money. Paying for a girl's dinner is obviously not going to be a good use of money. Um, Michael, okay. Another question here is, can you give us a play-by-play -play on how you can go from inviting a woman to an event and then demonstrating to her that she's on the list? 
In other words, if you invite a woman out to something, she says yes, whether it's in person or via IG, what is the next step? I mean, I know this is pretty simple, but what would be your next step there? Uh, so one more time, the second part of the question. Yeah. So once once you've sent a girl out an invite and she's agreed to come to something tentatively, where do you take it from there? Um, nothing. I just put her on a list. I just put her on a spreadsheet and send it in. And What's I said, so I'll usually do I'll usually do a first invite 17 days out, second like reconfirmation is like four to seven days out. And then the day of I'll be like, Hey, can you still make it? I might send three messages like that. Yeah. Sweet. Just, to, just to make sure she comes. By the way, guys, the other thing is you need to understand is uh, you're not trying to game girls over. She likes you. And then you use texting to get her in front of you. If you use it, people are like trying to generate attraction on text. It's so absurd. No, you don't generate attraction through text. What you do is you generate attraction when you meet them, then you use text for logistics. And yeah, so a lot of- Generate the majority of your attraction on your Instagram. That's why you have it. You, you, you're, well, well, uh, well I think the, the, the Instagram, uh, what it's funny because it was Zerka who told me this Instagram, when they see social proof, it drops anxiety to zero Instagram. Actually, what it does is it's a little bit of attraction, but it also drops anxiety when the girl, like no girl will look at my IG and be like, well, I'm going to hang out with this guy and I'm going to get like, no girl thinks that when they look at my shit, they're like, well, he, girls look extremely right. comfortable around him. Little does right. she know about slam ball. Yeah. She's going to slam ball at the Cox pavilion. The Cox come, to, come to Cox for some slam ball. <laughs> hey, uh, by the way, uh, we'll they gave me that one. Launch. Are, are you guys in? Are you guys in Vegas? Uh, I'm not. I'm, I'm they, I'm uh, Oscar, are you? Yes. Yeah, they gave me carp. Yeah. They do. They gave me carp blanche. I bring as many people as I want. They just want to fill this place up. ESPN is nice for it. Seven thirty tonight. I'm taking oh. Adam Sosnick and a bunch of girls with me. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Um. Next week. So, but like that's my container event. Like we go to slam ball. I put them in the VIP. The girls get to drink for free, and the girls are like, "What is this? Is this basketball?" And then some dude gets just fucking body. Like destroyed front flip dunk off a trampoline, and the girls are like, "What the fuck?" That the most Michael Sartain oh, shader event ever. The girls are like, "What the fuck was we that?" Gotta, bro, we gotta mic that... you up in the crowd, just screaming for, for, the, for the guys that don't look, know. look at these ducks, bro. Look at these ducks. Like we sit there and watch this shit, and the girls are like, "The girls are like, I don't know why we're here." And then they see like this, and they're like, "Okay, this is the coolest shit I've ever seen." And the girls like, "What?" They get off their phone and they're like, "What the?" F is this and they're like some huge like violent collision right at the basket yeah i go to this every week i take a bunch of girls to slam ball again so, so what is Michael, this look at think, think how different this is. i get free tickets to go to slam ball you're like how much money does this cost nothing it costs nothing so michael so for something like this because this ties into the next question too so alexander was saying look there's not a lot of glamour type events in greece right and so what can he do that's maybe not as high profile as what we're showing so let me let me connect it to this Michael, on an event like this, this is not a bikini competition. It's not a $60,000 prize. This is you doing something fun and funny in your city. Do you invite out your whole list? If not, how do you make the decision about who you're going to invite to this? Yeah, great example. Can I can I share my uh, screen again? Totally. Uh, I'll, I'll show you exactly the answer to that. It's, uh, I, I, haven't, I don't know if I've ever told you guys this. So what I started doing was, um, so that I have hot lists and cold lists. The cold list is the big list, like whatever the ma the massive list is. Stand by, let me let me pull this up real quick. I'm going. I got to go to my Google Drive. Give me one second. So the hot the the um the cold list is going to be like uh here we go Florida master list. This is just every girl I know in Florida that's hot. Okay, I don't live in Florida, so I don't know a ton of girls in Florida. But like these are the girls I would invite on Fresh and Fit. It's just not a huge list, but this is my Florida list. This is there's nothing in particularly that's good about this list right right now. But do you see this one over here? It's called uh, let me see another one. Um, the Vegas Master List is a cold list. Um, this is the Girls of Summer Bikini Competition. That's not a cold list. That's a warm list because those girls have recently come to a bikini competition. See this one, Golden Soiree, July 11th? This is a hot list. This means girls actually showed up to something. So what I'll do is when if I don't have a lot of time to do invites, I'll actually go through my last five hot lists. So I'll do Golden Soiree, Warwick New Year's Eve, um, no, then I'll go July 4th, Dragon Ridge, Maxim Carnival, and then Maxim Bitcoin or a babes in Miami. I'll do those five and I'll invite girls. Why is that list better? Because I could either do 4,000 girls, right? In which I got to have a VA go and invite 4,000 girls to an event. Or I could go through my last five hot lists, which is like, yep. you know, all to, because a lot of them overlap but it's like maybe three or 400 girls, but it's a higher percentage show up rate because those girls recently came to one of my events. Does that make sense? Right. Yep. That's so awesome. I'll take my, la my last five. So I'll take my, my cold lists, which are just massive lists. And then my hot lists, which are previous guest lists. I'll take all my previous guest lists. If I need to save time, I'll take the last five previous guest lists. And then I'll just invite those. I'll have, yeah, uh, I have a, a, a VA, he'll do it. 
He'll go through and he'll just invite those girls using what I tell him. Although the most important thing you got to tell your VA is to unsend previous messages. They must unsend. Uh, right. And then you do that. And then um, you'll get, a, a, instead of getting what I said before, 5%, you'll end up with 50% uh, uh, people responding back. Sweet. So Michael, imagine you're going to be going to Miami. It's your first time going. You have no network out there, zero connections. You have a good IG. You have your network here in Las Vegas. What would be the steps you would take to set yourself up in a city that you haven't established your network in? Yeah. So, so, so uh, I'm going to go first off on Instagram notes and I'm going to go on like all my app platforms and be like, Hey guys, I'm going to Miami from this state to this state. Uh, I did that or, and um, like girls started hitting me up. So you could use IG notes or, and then the other thing is I would post on story that you're going to be in Miami on those dates. Second thing I would do is I would ask someone, um, I would ask someone who uh, who lives in that area in Men of Action, hey, do you have a Florida list? So uh, you could get my Florida list or anybody else, like maybe Godwin or, or um, Shanka or one of those guys. You could ask them for their Florida list. And so I would do that and I would be like, okay, what's the event I could go to? And maybe you don't have an event. You just go through all the girls in there and you're like, where do they go? They, oh, they all go to Kiki on the river. Okay, they all go to 11 on fucking Friday and Saturday. You're going to you what you want to do is you want to get in fi, in vibe. You want to get in sync which with whatever the girls are doing. What whatever the cool people are doing, you want to become in sync with that. When you show up to a new city, you have a penis. You have no value whatsoever. No one wants to hang out with you. No one wants you to come to their party. No one wants to know you. No one wants to give you an invite to shit. So what you have to do is you show value and you have to become in sync with where the cool people are to the point where you can walk up to 11 and you get in there for free or you go to you know Mr. Jones and all the people there know you. That's what you have to do. But it takes a while to do that. How do you do that? You go through your list. You find it girls to, uh, to go to different parties. So for instance, I don't have this problem in Miami anymore because I I invite girls to the Maxim Bitcoin party. I invited girls to um, the Babes in Toyland event. And then I invited girls to go on Fresh and Fit. And sometimes I invite girls to go on Saucecast. So my list of girls is pretty big now in Florida. And so when I go to these parties in Florida, I just, I'll just invite all those girls from my Florida list who've already been to one of those events. And now then women introduce me to other women. That is the most important context to this whole, the most important point to this whole thing that I'm teaching you guys. Women introduce you to other women. And so that's what you'll learn by, like I said before, you have a big list, you have a bunch of things to invite them to, you invite them, you get as many open threads as you can. And then from there, it's like, okay, when you showed up, you'll, you're going to figure out, oh, this girl likes me, this girl doesn't. You go through the logistical questions, and then you would go through connector, suggester, content creator. You figure out which girls like you. And then your text game, like I said before, text game is like, you can be funny, but it's only to get you to the logistics to the next thing. Yep. I, so many guys are bad at pickup. And the reason why they're bad is because they accept validation from women as a win. They're like, yo, I could have fucked that girl. She made out with me. No, she made out with you because you wanted attention, not because you wanted to fuck. That's what you didn't understand because you take, because pickup teaches it the wrong way. You should deny validation. When women try to escalate on you in a club, you should actually like be like, okay, that's cool. Let's go somewhere else or push them, not really push them off, but like, don't participate. Don't participate. Give them a in slam women. ball, shove off. Yeah. Don't participate in women escalating on you in the club. They can do it for like a second, but then like, stop it. Because what happens is you'll have a girl and she'll just like grind on you all night at the club. And you'd be like, oh, thank you. Got my validation. It's almost yeah. like an energy vampire from what we do in the shadows. They're like an energy. They're like a validation vampire. And they'll they'll suck all the validation from you, and then as soon as they get it, they'll leave. With you, you're sitting there with blue balls. That's she's, what almost, she's almost disqualified you in some cases. Yes, the fact that you allowed that to happen disqualified you from even hooking up with her. So, Michael, so let's do let's do a bit of an advanced question, and then we'll start to slowly wrap up as well. Too. Let's say we're taking. Let's say there's a guy, guys on here taking action. This is kind of one of the questions from one of the guys too. Taking action, but one of the constraints is the quality of the girls that's around them. They've got mm -hmm. some female friends. They're able to throw some photo shoots. They're able to do some of the things that say a, a, a somewhat intermediate level, but the quality of girl is not where they would want it to be. In that scenario, what are the steps they can take to improve the quality of girls that are in their circle. Yeah. So this is a common issue I see. And it's always the same reason. You don't know how to make friends with women. If you make friends with women and you have really beautiful women on your side, this is never a problem. Uh, Again, I know I, if I get CJ Sparks to show up, she's going to bring her crew. Kindly Myers has her crew. Chloe Tere has her crew. Holly Barker has her crew. Uh, these girls all have their own little posses. And if you are, if you can learn to be friends with them, then they will bring their crew to your thing. And then you get hotter girls. That's number one. Number two, any photographers in here, you are going to be judged. What are you going to be judged by guys? Those in MOA right in the chat. You're going to be judged by what? All right, guys, you're going to be judged by the least attractive girl you take a photo of. Women are
be shallow. You, a lot of guys, like what will happen, I talked to Kindly about this and she said exactly what I said, which is she, she'll she look at, they'll, they'll look at these things and they'll be like, they'll look at all these photos. Okay, yes, yeah, so what a great example. None of these girls aren't stunning. You're going to be, if other girls will participate. Hot, so the thing is, hot girls don't bifurcate. Hot, hot girls go all go to one place. They're all going to one party. They're all going to the same group of photographers. They're all fucking the, the hot 200 hottest girls are all fucking the same 30 guys. Okay. So what you're saying, well, well, why does that work like that? Because those guys show social proof and that social proof you'll notice there's never, whenever you see those dudes, they're never with like 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, and a seven. There's always all 10. So if you're a photographer and you're having a hard time, I would make my photo profile only 10. That's how you get hotter girls. It's when you start including those girls that have the like the the tattoos on the front of their thighs and like kind of the flabby mom bod or the 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 fucking tattoos in between their tits. That's a huge sign that this girl is maybe an escort or drug addict or whatever. That's a great way to disqualify the hottest girls from hanging out with you. So a lot of you guys probably didn't realize this. One of the reasons why hot girls don't want to participate with you is because you're allowing, you're, you're not keeping up the quality. This is not men being shallow. This is women being shallow. Wim, women are the reason you have to do this. Women look at other women and say, she's not perfect. I won't go to your thing. I, I Dude, I know it sucks, guys. And so what will happen is you as a photographer, you're going to shoot 40 girls, but only have four girls that are 10s. Those are the only four girls you can show on your IG. The other girls you can give them their photos or whatever, or you can face out the shit out of them to where they don't look um, they don't look quite like uh, what you're showing, but like, if they're not as hot as Riley, then don't show them. Like, I, I know it sucks and it's really hard at the beginning, but if you want hotter girls, you need to say, what is the, the quality of hot girl I want? And no girl on my social media can be less attractive than her. Makes sense. Yep. Cool. Yeah. You, you're looking, you're yeah. Again, the flat, the, like the, the stretch marks, the fucking, the mom bod, the, the fucking tattoos on the front of the thighs, the tattoos in between the boobs, the except like a tattoo sleeve is actually not that bad. I don't mind that, but it's, you're going to see like girls with the excessive amounts of tattoos on their boobs, those girls. And then they're just like not physically attractive. Like they just have ugly faces. I'm not, I'm not saying this because I care because I don't care. I'm telling you this because does, does everybody understand that? Let's just do some quick wrap ups here. There's a couple of small questions in here, guys. Eric, yes, we are going to replay this this video. So everyone within within our Facebook group will have access to this. If you guys don't have access to it, it's called the High Status Personal Branding Secrets Group. Corey, would you mind dropping a link for the guys? Sure, yeah. You guys can request to join and we'll and we'll approve you. We've also dropped the the link for the school server for MOA if you guys are more interested in that as well. Also, we had a question in here about for guys that want to invite girls to a Maxim event, if the girl shows interest, you reach out to Michael by messaging him on IG. Right, Michael? That's the that's yep. the preferred way for you. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I, I gotta do the I, man, it sucks. I gotta do the fucking Maxim Carnival here in Vegas. It's gonna be cool, but it won't be like a Maxim Carnival in uh LA. It's gonna be like at a nightclub. So it's a, it's gonna be Where like a shared event. Uh, it's all at Resorts World. Uh, you know, Kim, Kim Hennessy, who, who ran Tropic Beauty, she's in charge of it. Gotcha. Sweet. Mm -hmm. um, cool, guys. There's some questions that we weren't able to get to. If you guys have questions for us, feel free to message Corey and I directly as well. But also know we're doing at no cost IG audits for everybody that's on this call. You do have to apply for it so you can send over your information. So you guys have multiple methods to get in touch with Corey and I and with Michael as well, too. Michael through the school server with us through the free IG audit that we just uh, dropped another link for here, as well as the Facebook group. We will be posting this call within 48 hours into the Facebook group uh, so you guys can rewatch as well. Michael, we appreciate the time, bro. Thank you so much for coming on. It's been good chatting with you, man. All right, man. I'll talk to you guys soon. Uh, Thank you, right, meet, me at, uh, meet me at Cox Pavilion at 730. Cox Slam Ball, let's go. All right, man. I'll see you guys <laughs> there. Michael. Thanks, Mike. Take care. Thanks, Michael. Yeah. All right, boys. Hope you guys enjoyed this call. We're going to be posting this content, the full replay in the Facebook group. Corey and I post in the Facebook group every single week with content breakdowns, with videos that we do not uh, release anywhere else but the Facebook group. So feel free to jump in there. Thank you guys a ton. Have a great weekend. We'll connect again soon on one of these free calls. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys.